Today we're gonna be doing a real-time portrait sketch and it's not very big, it's just on my handbook journal so I hope this doesn't take too long but I'm not gonna be editing my voice over for today since I do want to keep it within 10 minutes. But yeah, and the first thing I do as always is to start with a circle and with that shape that's bringing it down over to form a chin. And the reason why the chin isn't that long for this one is because her head is sort of angled down while, while even though she is looking at us, um, she also has her chin just slightly pointing down. And it's very, it's not really that drastic, but changes a lot of the angles on the face. So it would have the chin looking a little bit smaller than it should be if it was if she was facing right at us and and the features on the top of her head looking a little bit bigger than than they are so the reason why i'm doing this kind of sketches i really want to simplify my sketches a lot of the time i say that a uh, sketch is just going to be really quick i end up doing them for almost an hour at the least so this time i just want to want them to be i just want this one to be simple and i want to focus on the features rather than the actual shading one of the most fun parts while i was doing this was doing the hair i really had fun playing around with those shapes and because i am making it simple i sort of uh, put a lot more emphasis on the movement of the hair so I'll be playing around with the strands a little bit later on this time I'm just really just going out just going over the general shape of her hair and now I can focus on the features of her face and I like drawing the eyebrows first because it's the easiest way to figure out the expression of her face later on and then have a baseline for where I want the nose to be so because it's tilted down more you see a lot more of the the tip of her nose and you know, don't really see a lot of her nostrils so I'm trying to be more aware of that and that's why I'm mapping out her nose first and I have just that circle on top of it just so I can point out that <laughs> that's how it tilted that down and then I'm just going over the shapes over the areas where I want her eyes to be and it kind of looks like this spider-man mask shape thing that I that is always the easiest for me to figure out where to place the eyeballs and as I'm doing this, I'm also imagining that the reference photo was also wearing the same mask so as soon as I know where those big areas are placed on her face, I know where to draw them on my drawing and so it's easier for me to know where I want the eyeballs to be. And I was asked before how placing the eyeballs would help me draw the eyes because when I was first starting out, I also didn't know how that would be. but. The eyeballs sort of really help me know where to place the arch when I'm drawing the eyelids because with them I know that the arch sort of just follows the sphere that's underneath so I know how arched the eyelid should be and how straight the line is gonna look depending on how much the person is opening their eyes. And I hope I am explaining it well but that's how, that's how it helps me. And I'm being very careful to focus the folds and the shading on the underneath side, the underside of her eyes and not on the upper side because I do want her to look like she has um, a monolid, is that what it's called? And then I just have the underside of the eyebrows just there. And so when I'm drawing the lips, I try to do the chin first and then I just do the corners of the lips by using where the nose ends as references for how wide her mouth is going to be. And once I have those pointed out, I can just start off with the pointy middle and then feather them out onto where the mouth ends. That is the easiest way I've found to draw lips. And then because I already have all the major features that I want to 
be present in the drawing i'm already starting the shading on her lip and i'm doing the faded out thing where it's darkest in the middle which i just really like for shading lips i really like how it looks and then i'm just darkening up the shadows where it falls on the left side of her face more and i really tried to not overdo this part but i think i kind of did well I overdid it from I went over how I wanted it to look while I before I started but now that I'm looking at it after I ended up I ended the drawing I think I it went okay I, think I didn't overdo it too much but right now it does look like I overshaded her her cheek and her forehead right there but yeah it was still really fun and now I, j I can just play around with her hair a little bit more the shading on the hair is very different from the shading on her face well i did that with her face i just did one direction for every value so if it was if it was one layer of value in shading it would be one different direction and then if it was it went a little bit darker than that i would go a different direction but for her hair i want really wanted to let the shading follow where the hair is going Since I was really bothered by how I think by the, the shading on her forehead and on her cheek, I sort of just went over it with my with a darker pencil and that always helps with evening things out when I think I've done too much because it's such a darker value than the red that I used. It sort of just overpowers a lot of the layer that I did underneath that so it's great for what I need it for right now and this part was really fun I think I went a different style than my usual I know I have her features be not too realistic I know they're a little bit exaggerated I really liked not focusing on on making it look too realistic and just having fun with it so that's what I'm doing right now I'm also reminded of how hard it is to have eyes be, to have eyes look even and I don't know, I think she's a little bit cross-eyed on this one. It's sort of intentional on this one because I think she would have her, she has their phone be closer to her face while she was taking the selfie and so that's why, yeah, that's how I'm justifying it. Yeah, I really liked how her nose went because always when I'm doing the shading, it always looks like the the circle that I do is just so overpowering. And now that I have the darker pencil do the nostrils underneath, I really like how it's looking. And then the lines that I did for her lips really just helped with carving out the lips more and have them look a little bit more fun. And then I'm just going over the general shape of her hair first and I'm starting off with the shadows and again I'm just making them the shading follow the direction of the hair strands and it's very light and this sketch in general turned out to be really light and I hope you guys and I hope you don't mind it being such a short video but that was kind of the point of this sketch I wanted to focus less on having it look too realistic and have and just have it be more fun
Now I want to talk to you guys about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a powerful and beautiful online platform that you can use to build your own website. You can use it to connect with your audience, generate revenue through gated members-only content, and you can manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insight in one easy-to-use platform. You can share your posts on your social media, on your website, and also automatically post your website content onto your social media so your followers there can see and share them too. And if you're someone like me who's been trying to build their portfolio, you can present your work with Squarespace with their very professional looking portfolio designs. They have co very customizable galleries and you can even have password protected galleries which is great for when you're ready to do commissions. Image blocks automatically scales and displays your images to make sure they always look right regardless of their place in your contents. So to do that, just double click on an image to get an overlay of the full image itself and then drag that to ensure the best crop for your artworks or for your images. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash hamribart so you can get 10% off of your purchase of a website domain. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I will be seeing you again soon.